Hi, I'm Dan Blackmore of Henley Business School, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through an academic assessment of Adidas's recent 100% Unfair campaign. As one of the largest sportswear manufacturers in the world, Adidas wants to promote the launch of their new football boots, which they called the Mutator Pack. I wanted to look at this campaign because for me I found it really interesting how they used three core streams of highly tailored content across their paid, owned and earned channels for maximum impact. So let's dive in on what those three streams were. Their first stream focused on creating the base for integrated marketing communications by tailoring their own channels to integrate product advertising. Their core message they wanted to build was that these boots were unfair. They started by tailoring their website so that the first thing potential customers saw when they go to adidas.com forward slash football was an image of the new boots. This was also true for their social media channels, where they tailored the cover photos on YouTube and Twitter to show an image of the leading product, the Predator boots. Alongside this, they also began creating tailored online media content, which involved getting global footballing superstars to feature in short online adverts. These star-studded adverts were made to improve the consumer reception towards online communications, as having well-known athletes that consumers can trust is shown to better influence their beliefs, opinions, attitudes and behaviour through a process called internalisation. Their My Unfair Advantage vlog has thus far featured England icon David Beckham talking about how the dark moments of his sending off against Argentina at the 1998 FIFA World Cup ultimately made him a better footballer. With the aim of generating traffic to the Adidas e-commerce website, this video was designed to capture the attention of their target market through the offering of purely hedonistic content. Adidas created hedonism by focusing on the story and avoiding product placement until the very end of the video once Beckham's story is finished. Hedonism not only helps the viewer attentiveness to online videos, but embedding the product visual just after the high arousal ending of this story was likely to have positive influences on advert perception and brand recall. Their third and final stream was entirely focused on creating flagship content that would go viral in the footballing community and spread awareness about the product launch. A scenario-based marketing strategy, the rent a pred consumer hotline was an influencer-led campaign that allowed amateur five-a-side teams to apply to have an Adidas-sponsored player come and play for their team in a match. Their social media launch video had a very clear call to action. WhatsApp the Adidas hotline to get a player. A well-selected platform, WhatsApp was chosen as it's generally how most football teams will communicate in a group chat. Simultaneously, Adidas paid selected influencers to post on Instagram that they were in this program with the message that they knew this was going to be unfair. Sounds familiar, right? Instagram was likely selected as the core platform as it's generally how most of millennials and Gen Zs, the majority of their target market, follow influencers. The influencers used included footballers such as the F2 freestylers who alone have 8 million followers on Instagram. The virality of this content really took off when Adidas surprised everyone by sending Kaka, a Brazilian footballing icon, to play for a five-a-side team in London. Having won the Ballon d'Or for World's Best Player in 2007, Kaka was idolised by much of the target market growing up and thus made for a great viral video. His appearance was so huge it was shared by large online sources such as the BBC Sport, Unidays and even Sky Sports themselves. So, do I think the campaign was successful? For the brand, absolutely. But for product sales, I'm not too sure. The content created and the channels used were great for increasing Adidas's social presence, as the amount of social sharing they gained from their viral videos really helped to attract the attention of new customers in a very authentic way through the social graph amplification model. I also believe their lifestyle brand approach, that is, showing more of consumer and celebrity activities rather than the product itself, really helped Adidas build their brand salience with the activity of playing football. However, it has been shown that hedonistic content can detract from the core message of an advertising campaign, which I believe may have happened here. Much of their earned media channel focuses almost entirely on Kaka, with next to no mention of the product in many of these articles. So, if you were to measure the success of this campaign using the customer journey model, you could argue strong success in reach and interaction, but perhaps weaker success in action and return. In the future, I would suggest that Adidas put more emphasis earlier in their viral videos, perhaps the midway point, in order to ensure that enough attention is paid to the product if they want to boost product sales. That's it for my video today. Let me know what you thought about Adidas's 100% unfair campaign by commenting down below. And if you liked what you saw in this video, please be sure to drop a like and share it with your friends. As for now, that's pretty much me done. See you next time.